it and just utilize it in the material structure and get some new pair of skites which are less toxic or even non-toxic. Another opportunity is the interfacial engineering to improve the uh, efficiency of the solar cell. Here, uh, this is the, the, the very first diagram I have shown to you. This is the perovskite material and this is the electron transporting layer. This is the uh, whole transporting layers. So the difference is, uh, is you still you can see there is some difference. If you can utilize some new materials or if you combine some of the existing material and just decrease a little bit the, this energy difference, then it can be a brand new work because this will automatically lead towards the improvement in the device efficiency. Here, uh, this, is, this is some images from our work. Here, when we used PCBM as electron transporting layer, then there were this much energy difference. Then when we combined PC, this is another uh, kind of organic material, when we combine it, so the energy difference is decreased. And when we combine this with another material, so this energy difference was almost minimized. And as a result, we got an improvement in the PCE. This improvement is very little. You can see here, we just moved from 17.5 to 18.29. But still, this work is published in the uh, material chemistry A. So it means a little modification in these interface and a little bit increase in the device performance can, can be a very good work. And one other thing is the development of the new materials. So not only the experimental uh, side people, but also the theoretical side people, which is very convenient for them. Just, just to use some, some different material from, the, from those which I, I have filtered already and utilize it in the perovskite structure and make some new perovskite structure and study their uh, optic, up to electronic properties. So it will be a, a brand new work. And uh, here, uh, somebody did this for me because I don't have any uh, background of these theoretical calculations. But uh, the idea was uh, uh, from my side that if we replace the, the middle one, this, this structure is already reported, but not for the silver and chromium. So I, uh, I suggested that if we can utilize silver and chromium, so collectively it will become plus 4, but lead is plus 2. So it, uh, the structure will be changed, but still it will be a perovskite structure, but this kind of structure is known as double perovskite structure. And uh, when we have studied the properties of these materials like band gap and electron density and other properties, so these properties are also favorable for making up to electronic devices. So these are some properties. Uh, and uh, one other thing left, the last thing is, which is also another opportunity for the beginners that if you can, if you can think about some new fabrication technique, no, I, I'm not talking about a brand new technique, but a little bit modification is required, which, which reduce the the price of the material, or the sophistication of the the, the process. So it can be also a, a new work like here. Recently, we we have uh, done this work, and uh, in this work, uh, we just modified, a we did a little bit modification. Here, if you look into the, the this figure A, uh, if we put this much perovskite precursor on the substrate, so it is, it, it is not able to cover the whole substrate because during the spinning process, most of the solution just fly away from the substrate due to the centrifugal force during the spinning. But if you increase the amount of the precursor solution, so at last you will get the, uh, the the full coverage of the film, but the cost is you have consumed a lot of amount, a lot of amount, a lot of amount of the precursor solution. Like you can see here, it's 90 microliters, so it's much more. Most of the solution is just wasted. So what we did, and the reason for this, uh, first I would like to 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 show the to discuss about the reason why the the the, the precursor solution is not going to stick on the surface of the. Uh, the, the substrate. Here, if you look into the bare ITO structure, so the ITO surface is very rough, mm -hmm. and uh, if you put the solution on there, it will stick very easily on the rough surface. But when you put the whole transporting layer, for example, this PTEA, so this film is very smooth, and it will uh, just cover up those grooves on the, or the roughness of the 
uh, ITO service and then when you put the perovskite solution, so all of the solution will just fly away. So what we did, we decreased the, the thickness of this uh, whole transporting layer almost to a mono layer. So the, the, the roughness of the ITO was not changed, mean the roughness was almost the same but still there was a whole transporting layer. So due to this roughness of the film, the, the solution was very easily uh, stickable on the surface of this. Here you can see this is the, on the thicker whole transporting layer, so you can see here the solution is not going to spread because uh, of the smoothness of the surface. But here, since the surface is rough, so this I am more hydrophobic, so the solution is easily just spreading on it. So what what we got at the end? We got that this 90 microliter was decreased to only 12 microliter, and we got full coverage of the film. So a lot of amount of the precursor solution was saved. And you can see here, for this the contact angle is very large. It means this uh, on this surface it is very hard to form a thin film. But this surface, for this surface the contact angle was very small. It means the solution was very easy, uh, stretchable. Uh, uh, here, if you see the SEM image of both, compare, compare to SEM images of both, so the one with the thicker uh, hole transporting layer, there are a lot of grand boundaries and uh, so many thin holes which are appear as a uh, trap sites when, when, when it is utilized to, to a solar cell device. Also the PL intensity is increased and also the lifetime is increased and also at the end the device characteristics are increased like IV characteristics and uh, electric quantum yield and current density is, everything is just increased and if you see here the, the efficiency was about 17 percent but it was increased up to 18.5 percent now okay uh, so these were the just uh, opportunities for the beginners so you can think about these things to start your new work this is some of the the, the the progress which we have done uh, during the, the two uh, during the two year of my PhD at uh, Department of Physics Vijayan University these are some publications which are already online and some are submitted some are under reviews for some the revision are uh, being submitted and uh, this is my supervisor if somebody uh, uh, any of you is interested in our lab especially for the postdoctoral programs and for PhD nowadays they are accepting the Chinese government scholarship students so my supervisor most welcome the foreign students you can directly just send your CV on this email or you can just directly contact with him and uh, in, nowadays he is also searching for the postdoctoral stu doctoral students so you can also just discuss your CV with him and hopefully you will get uh, opportunity to join our lab so that's it. Thank you very much. If you have any question, then you can ask me. Okay, thank you. Thank you Nathan, for such a nice and comprehensive talk. Uh, okay, questions from uh, the students. You can ask uh, regarding the research, regarding uh, quality <coughs> applications, regarding future opportunities because this was specifically uh, arranged for you for the MPhil PhD students because uh, just few years back he was here and now he is somewhere else 34 pages uh, okay 34 yes yeah here you say that there is preferable orientation. Yeah. And the start you said that these are the two peaks characteristics of characteristic of perovskite structures. Yeah, exactly. Right? So we are not having these two peaks in these. And secondly, you don't mention which peak corresponds to what or which compound you are making. Uh, what what does this X-ray represent? Uh, this is a very nice question. Uh, actually, 
in this at the start when I was talking about the A B X three perovskite, yeah, yeah. then I have mentioned that there should be two peaks yeah. near to fifteen degree and the other should be near to thirty degree. 30, yeah. But that one was for the A B X three structure. Okay. But if we look into this structure, this yeah. is an entirely different structure. When bismuth is utilized into the perovskite structure, mm -hmm. its valency is plus three. And this plus three changed the whole structure of the perovskite. It is converted into some other kind of structure, not that EBX3. So okay. we didn't observe those typical perovskite peaks. Okay. And other actually, I got it directly from my uh, research work, uh, where I have mentioned those. Uh, here you can see 006 plan. And yeah, I did not But of what? Uh, actually, this is of those perovskite structure. No, what, which compound is it? Actually, the, uh, the compound is A3B2X9. It is a structure like this. Okay. It is not the typical ABX3 perovskite. Okay. Because when bismuth comes into the structure, the structure is entirely changed. Okay, but what we usually do? We write on the top that it is matching this particular card? Yeah, yeah, of okay. course. Okay. I have this mentioned, structure. actually, this paper is submitted to advanced function material and I have mentioned all the things in the oh, okay, but okay. unfortunately I didn't mention those here in the XRD slide. Okay. Yeah. And when uh, if you go to the microstructures, uh, yeah. they were probably after this. Here yes, yeah. right? Uh, here the grain size yeah. uh, is comparatively much smaller yeah. in comparison to the previous ones. Yes. So the XRD peaks must be very, very broader, right? Uh, the XRD yes. peaks must be much, much broader. Yeah, yeah, of course. It should right? Be. Yes. But if you are making thin film, yeah. thin film is of nano scale, but the grain size you show there, uh, I presume the micron mark right. in there was, uh, about 50 micrometers and, and you uh, could see them with the optical microscope even. No, no, actually those were of the ABX3 structure. No, yeah, yeah, I, I, you are right. Yeah, yeah. But what I am saying that if you are making a thin film, yeah. a thin film means that uh, it is nano scale, yeah, obviously. Yeah. So how the grains become so large? and how they become so oriented that they only fall along, for example, if the AB axes are smaller and the C axis is, uh, is giving a that particular C axis very large face of the crystal, then how were they oriented that they were thin films in one direction they spread to more than 50 micrometers but in other direction, they were reflecting a thin film. Yeah. So the two faces were nano scale, and the larger uh, face. Yeah, of course, this is very nice observation. But indeed, these <coughs> films are obtained by spin coating process. Mm -hmm. So when they are, the, when the process of spin coating is occurred, there is an extra lateral centrifugal force on these directions. Okay. But these directions are free to move. So that's why the grains are usually mm -hmm. moved to be orient, oriented perpendicular to the surface, not along those directions. Yeah. And as far as, this is also very nice observation. You, uh, and one of, uh, our reviewer in the last uh, papers also mentioned about the grain size comparison yeah. with the XRD and these. Yeah. But uh, the, the reason is we do not have that much control on the thickness of the film. So sometimes the thickness of the film is larger as compared to the other film. So that's why sometimes the grain sizes are bigger, some are smaller, which cannot be uh, accurately observed. That, why, that is why the disturbance is formed in the... So, for example, if you yeah. are talking of polarization-related properties, yeah. if you are talking of polarization-related properties, then the porosity are these things may matter, but not that much. But if you are calling your material semiconducting material, where the whole game is a hole in electron, yes, then a slight variation in microstructure can bring yeah. a lot of changes. Of course. Right? Yeah. 
So I am looking into these, they appear as bulk ceramics. <laughs> <laughs> they don't yes. appear as thin films. Yeah, uh, actually the, um, here, we are measuring the thickness here, so you can see even here the thickness is not uniform of the film. Yeah, so that's yeah. why this discrepancy is mm. uh, appear in the XRD and yeah, yeah. this. Yeah. But it is in a nanometer range or micron? Yes, yes, uh, this is the nanometer range, you can see here, 300 nanometer yeah. is this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The bulge is no okay. Upward swallow okay. Okay. Is there relevance uh, with the piezo ceramics? Because we have worked on the same biscuit. Uh, so biscuit you mean uh, you want to study the piezoelectric pro piezoelectric properties of the Yes. Material? If we link this, uh, yes, our of course, of course, you know, we have worked with piezo yes. ceramics. Actually, with the same bismuth addition. Okay. Actually, I have mentioned only about the up to electronic applications of this material. You got a lot of application as an option. You can just make a new material, utilize it for any other material, and uh, it should be just like a prerequisite that for which application you are trying to <coughs> fabricate this material. So you have to keep all those properties in mind while choosing those A, B, X, three materials. So. Yes, you can utilize, but you have to study those properties first, whether this material or the particular element reflects or exhibit those properties or not. Yes. Number two, sir, the routes you followed, can yeah. we use it here? Of course. As I have skipped so many from that, there were a huge number of methods. I have mentioned those which can be utilized, can be uh, adopted here with the limited facilities, like just you need a spin coater which comes in about 10,000 or something like this. We already have one. And yes, yeah. of course, this is very common device. Or if you don't have the spin quarters, then even you can have a small doctor blade. Go to a doctor shop or even you can just uh, ask a chemistry people to, to give you a small capillary tube. Just put a drop here and spread the solution uniformly there. So of course you can do it. Thank you. Okay, from all this work when I was uh, going through, 90% can be done here in MRR. Only the external quantum efficiency, which we are just purchasing, means in the process. The rest, all you can say, these things we have here. So and the synthesis as well as the characterization, they can be done in uh, MRR. The ACM here in uh, CRM, while the quantum efficiency is on its way, so hopefully. We will be confident yeah. on this if you want to do it. And one other yes, thing. Yes, and then when his help will be required. If you so guys need some characterization which are not available here, so I have already discussed with uh, Dr. Shahid Ali that you can just uh, hand over the sample to me and uh, I will just send you the results and then you can proceed. So I can help that way as well. Thank you. Bismuth, you have in the side of the Bismuth and you Valency plus 3 hai. Exactly. So, cha hai to plus 2 hai. Actually, there are so many classes of perovskite. Uh, Dr. Yasin Iqbal is the uh, expert in this field and he, uh, uh, you must have heard from him that there, there is a broad range of these perovskite material, not only the ABX3 material. So, when you utilize plus 3, so now the charge uh, charge imbalances occur. So you need to balance the charge in the octahedra. So at other side you have to use plus one. So plus one plus three become four. So when two octahedra comes at one side it is plus one, at the other side is plus three. So collectively again it becomes four. And if you are thinking about bismuth, so when bismuth is utilized, so this structure is completely different. It will not form that octahedra, it will form bioctahedra and it will create a zero dimensional structure which is not sharing its atom in any other direction. There will be isolated two octahedra. So ABX3 is something different from the case in bismuth. It becomes A3B2X9. So it becomes another type of pair of skies. We have used bismuth as a and we have a very the structure. And one phase में नहीं होता, double phase में होता है फिर। तो अगर किसी हद तक वो single phase में है 
और इसका स्ट्रक्चर और इसका वेलेंसी जो है प्लस थ्री है तो फिर अगर इसका एक हेड्रा इफेक्ट होती है तो फिर चाहिए कि इसका फेस भी चेंज हो जाए हमारे साथ तो रिजल्ट आया है जो बेटा के साथ मिलता है मतलब इसके कार्ड के साथ मिलता है जो 